friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workday. It's Memorial Day 2022. And uh, in the background here, you see my friend uh, from Illinois, that's Carl Johnson. And he, he and his wife, Brenda, spent the weekend with us here at the farm. I didn't get to spend a lot of time with them as I was tied up with uh, Melissa's Festival this weekend. We played a show Friday night and then we played a show Saturday afternoon and that pretty much knocked me out of commission around here. But uh, I hope they've had a good time here. Carl, step up and tell the folks what you think. Thanks, Jerry. You know, we enjoyed the house. Uh, I know your, your wife and contacting my wife when we rented a place, she's just like, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere. Because <laughs> I know some We people, are in the middle of nowhere. You, know, we, you don't have TV. <laughs> and, you know, so this, for us, was like a time to recharge. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Get, get away from things for a while. And we don't mind this. We have friends that... Uh, they, they go to cruises all the time. They keep bugging us to go. I said, yeah. no, I spend my money. I go to the cabins in the mountains by myself. That's what I like to do. Yeah, me too. I'm so. the same way. Yeah, I, I drove all the way to Florida one time on the promise of a free condo stay and being on the beach. And I thought, well, this sounds like it'd be fun. When I got there, there were thousands of people on the beach. I mean, like the whole beach was covered with people. I literally spent the night, got in the car the next morning and drove home. I just, it was not for me. It was not for me at all. It was it's just yeah. not my idea of a good time. So I just left. I couldn't stand it. I, yeah, I, I don't like the idea of, you know, they, they, they talk about these cruises being so nice. And it's like, I don't like to be, I be like being stuck on a boat with a thousand people. Yeah, well, I, especially you know. these days with COVID. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Everybody has their thing, but to me, it's the isolation. I would much prefer the quiet and the calm, and, you know, that's yeah. a relaxing time for me. Carl brought a uh, guitar. It's an Ibanez, and tell them a little bit more about that. I, it's, it's up on the shelf where I'd show you. Yeah, I, I brought it. Uh, it's one of those things I, I thought about repairing it myself after watching your videos like I have. You know, I've, yeah. I've probably watched every video you got. <laughs> But it's also like my baby. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I worked on my grandfather's farm and got enough money up to buy this guitar brand new back in 1972. So this wow. has been like my baby. And uh, uh, I used it, as my wife would say, she goes, uh, she was even talking about today, left notes in your your, your, your notebook up there at the, at the house. Uh -huh. I used to serenade her on this guitar. So it's like memories for her too. <laughs> cool. So being able to get it fixed, yeah. So it's in better playing. I mean, it's kind of playable, but right. we, we looked at it. You saw the problems. And right. So I'm going to leave it here for you to take care of. And sure. we'll, we'll just take another trip back down here and pick it up. So. And for our viewers out there, it's, you know, basically it's got the kind of typical problems that I'll, especially a lot of the older Gibsons have. It has the same kind of bridge, the adjustable bridge, and it's very little material left in the bridge because they cut the big slot out for the adjust, adjustable saddle. And then, of course, you got all your holes like you normally have. So the whole bridge is very weak and it's allowed the top to bulge up quite a bit. And so we're really going to just take the bridge off, put a little bit oversized a solid bridge in there and try to flatten the whole top out with an internal call when we well while we clamp it together and glue the new bridge on there and that'll you know at least stop it from getting any worse and hopefully take a little bit of that bulge out of the top yep. and i think you'll be fine it it's on the edge of a neck reset but the neck angle is not like this it's 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 pretty much just flat and flat is okay it, it it's better if they're just a hair down but flat is okay, and his neck is flat, and we can easily set it up to a flat neck, no problem. So uh, anyway, that's the story on it. You'll see that in a future video coming down the road. I don't know when because there are several other instruments in front of it, so i got to get to those first. Now that I'm not working on the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human, I'll have time to work on this stuff. Which so. that mandolin was loud. We, you know, I got to watch you practice the other day before oh, yeah. he went, and how then that guy's got some punch to it. How did it, yeah, how did it sound <laughs> like compared in volume to the other instruments? You know, except for the dobro, I think you all did everybody else. Yeah, for sure, I would think. Yeah, the dobros they have kind of their own sound. Yeah, too. they got their own deal. So, yeah, yeah, with that resonator on there, they got that yeah. unique sound, which I think is very cool. Yeah, they're <laughs> horizontal guitar with a hubcap. Yeah. That's what I call them. <laughs> 
But uh, anyway, it's been a pleasure having you here, right. Carl, and thank you so much for coming yeah, out. Yeah, kind of a nice retreat for us, too, because uh, Thursday is our 43rd wedding anniversary. So. Wow. Well, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. I have one of mine coming up here, and I'm hesitant to say which one it is. <laughs> Because we were we were married in '76, so I'd have to get out the calculator here. <laughs> uh, well, I was married in '79, so three more here, '46. <laughs> well, Thanks, Jerry. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. So I thought I'd give you a little update on the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human. <laughs> and those of you who know already uh, know I'm just joking about all that. It's just was a goal that I was trying to build the finest mandolin in the world. Obviously, I built a nice mandolin. I don't consider it the finest mandolin in the world, but it's a very nice mandolin, and I'm really proud of it. Uh, the detail on it is really second to none. I, I don't recall seeing another mandolin any nicer looking or better made, um, so I'm, I'm happy with that part of it. I, it might be the world's finest from that regard. In terms of the sound, it's as good as any I've really heard. It's just, uh, I can't say it's better than the rest, but it's just as good as any of the rest. So I'm really, really tickled with it. I, I played it Friday evening, uh, seven o'clock at Melissa's uh, campground at the show there. And uh, I feel like we did a really good show that Friday evening. And uh, I really got wonderful feedback on the, on the mandolin. They said, oh, that thing is gorgeous. And it just sounds so awesome. That's pretty much everybody that was there was telling me that. Then on Saturday afternoon around two o'clock, we went back and took the stage again. But I was in a fog that Saturday afternoon and I wasn't, I wasn't clicking on all my cylinders. I, I don't know if it was something to do with my medicine. Like I'm on a little bit of a blood pressure and I'm on uh, some, uh, you know, allergy type medicine all the time. And so I don't know if that had something to do with it or it was just my day not to play that well, but I was having trouble uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, the people that were there said we sounded great and we had a good show, but uh, I would have only given the Saturday show maybe a B plus. Melissa was very nice and uh, said we just did an awesome job and she loved our selection of songs and all that stuff. But uh, I tell you what, I couldn't have been more happy with my mandolin though. The next time you'll get to see the mandolin will probably be uh, at our uh, every Tuesday night gig at uh, Dickie's Barbecue in Rolla, Missouri. So we start playing there around oh, 06 o'clock or so every Tuesday evening and we play till around 8.30, something like that. So if you're ever in the Rolla, Missouri area on a Tuesday evening, be sure to stop in at Dickie's Barbecue there right in the middle of Rolla. Before I let you go, I just thought I'd mention one more thing, is that I am going to put out the final episode on building this mandolin later today. So you'll see this video first, and then shortly after, you'll see the release of the final video on building this mandolin, and I think you'll enjoy it quite a lot. That's gonna be it for today. Hope you enjoyed the update. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.